Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including Mysticons, which we'll be getting into right now. I'm Dylan Heisen, and today I'm joined by Delaney Stilval. Hey, y'all. And April Collins. Hello. Today, Delaney, April, and I are back to talk Mysticons, um, episode 29, Happily Never After. Uh, Mysticons airs a- Saturdays, 8 a.m. on Nicktoons, and then um, online afterwards, and, well, not on Nick.com, is what we're talking about. Nick, uh, put the episodes on your website, <laughs> please, please, if you're listening. Please, um, And uh, we talk Mysticons every week, uh, that it's new here on the Overly, Min- Overly Animated Podcast. Find us at OverlyAnimated.com, or search for Overly Animated Mysticons. Uh, subscribe uh, there on YouTube. Uh, a lot of people are watching on YouTube. Subscribe on our YouTube to not miss any of our Mysticons recaps. Spoilers for Happily Never after a big plot episode so make sure you've seen this one before listening any further uh but let's get into this uh delaney what did you think of happily never after um overall i think it was a good episode mainly for like there were some really good character moments and proxima just looks really cool like i'm really into like her new look yeah um and i'm so glad we're not getting the dumb shadows back and but instead we have the creepy like faceless astromancers so that's pretty cool um i really liked um uh, tasma in the beginning she was cracking me up and then zarya was like hurricane zarya and she was like oh my god please don't shake the snug globe that was great um overall i like I, I just i liked the episode i was not impressed with the guardian of the library. Snelson? You weren't impressed with Snelson? Okay, the fact that his name's Snelson is like the only good thing about him. Um, it was so frustrating watching him try and get to the quill. I was like, why did they pick a snail? Why? Um, I liked the bookworm. That was, it was very obvious where that was going, but I liked it anyway. And it was cute and Piper's cute, so it doesn't really matter. Overall, I liked the episode. I don't necessarily think that like the plot of the episode was that great, but like, Everything else, I think, worked really well. Okay. Uh, thumbs up. April, what did you think of Happily Never After? I liked it as well. Um, I d- totally am digging uh, Proxima's new look. Uh, but she's like that weird orange color that the spectral dragon was that I didn't like and I didn't understand. <laughs> and it's like, I was like, you could have chosen like any other color and she probably would look like a million times better. But it, she still looks good. So I'm into it. Uh I, I like I kind of have problems with Proxima because I liked her and I have this entire time. But like, I feel like her like being evil is so like self like done. And so that kind of drives me crazy. Um, but like it, it was good. And I guess it's like interesting to see where like we're taking this because uh, we just didn't know what was going to happen with Proxima, I guess. And so like, I guess there's a new codex now and I wonder what that's about. How do you even write a codex? Like, where do you decide? Like, what is chapter one? Um, and apparently we're getting like new baddies. Yeah. Like that's, that's interesting too. So I guess we're getting like the anti mysticons. That's a thing, but that's exciting. So, but no, it was a, it was an all right episode. Uh, like the action was kind of interesting and fun. And I liked that they said it's magic hour, but without magic. So <laughs> that was kind of funny, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was good. Yeah. Okay. Thumbs up. Um, I think this episode is really good. Uh, kind of a return to form. I'm, I'm very happy that uh, back to the, the normal kind of plotty episodes. It wasn't that long. It just felt like a while because of the break. But um, I think that uh, there's a lot to like in this episode. I think the uh, Proxima stuff's the headline, and we'll get into that first, even though we've kind of like no, we we had the beginning scene for a while, so we've known uh, what what was happening here, um, and then we'll speculate on who those things are at the end. I'll uh, we'll save that for the end of the podcast. Um, but this episode is uh, it, it's got some great Arcana Proxima stuff. It's got some. Um, I, I enjoy the plot. I like Snelson. I'll defend him, <laughs> and uh, oh, of course, uh, and it's, it's just it's like a jammed uh, jam packed episode. There's a ton of references to stuff in there. I like that. So, um, and then there, April referenced one of the good meta moments which I'll, we'll get into all of those as well. So um, I'm, I'm very happy with Happily Never After. But let's t- let's start with Proxima, because uh, up to this episode, we knew she got the mask, we knew she was going to be evil, but this is the first time we see her in her half-mask form. Um, she is 
called Proxima, and uh, she is <laughs> she is still her voice, and she still seems like herself. Those were surprising to me. Um, in that uh, I, I kind of assumed that she would be more seem more uh, inhabited by evil. Like uh, I think M says that she's she's been corrupted by the mask in the beginning, and uh, I think it's kind of maybe hard to blame any of her behavior now because she's she's corrupted, but she seems like herself. Um, yeah, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, I, I think it would have been like I don't know more impactful if they had done like a kind of like a double voiceover thing for her like kind of like a creepy sort of like shadowy kind of voice on top of her regular voice to sort of enforce that she's like corrupted now but i don't know it's almost like it's just i mean is she corrupted that's my question like yeah. it seems like she just wanted power it's like tasma like tasma wasn't corrupted she just wants power yeah tasma is just evil but proxima is i don't it's like they took or maybe like the mask took like the one bad feeling inside of her and like exaggerated right. it is She's more so what it seems. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we don't need to get into the akumatized here, but uh, miraculously about <laughs> references. But uh, yeah, I think I think this is maybe like the the hottest fandom <laughs> debate topic is like uh, is is Proxima to blame for what's happening, and do we feel bad for Proxima? Do we like what's happening with Proxima here? Um, well, and- I just don't like her like seeming motivation of like my life sucks. Like, yeah. like oh, now I'm not a princess, so now I'm mad. I'm like, Proxima, you're better than this. Well, it's like it just seems like her her motivation. Ha- she has no ground to stand on it because she's like, it feels I've very childish. Pr- it 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 kind of is, and she she's you know she keeps saying like it's like oh my life sucks, and it's like but. And she's like, because I had a family and then it was taken away from me. And look at you guys, you're happy and you're sisters. And it's like, yeah, but you were still being included in all of that. Like you, you literally chose to not be a part of this. Like they were still including her. And even like throughout the entire episode, like Arcane is like, I know she's in there. Like, you know, she's still calling her sis. Like she's saying that she loves her. So it feels very like almost like unwarranted. At this point, like you, why do you feel bad? Because there's let no me love you. you. Yeah, like. <laughs> <laughs> so are you are you mad at Proxima? A little bit because she's Being a brat. Yeah, kind of. It's kind of like that, but because like it's not like the you know Arcana or Zarya or anyone was ever mean to her. So why are you being mean? Like I don't know. <laughs> it's just confusing because like. So, like, they introduced Proxima, and we're all like, mm, suspicious. And, I'm, you know, we were the whole time, we were like, mm-hmm, they're going to cover her, which they did, obviously. But, like, it just, it's, like, they've presented her motivations very clearly, but it's still confusing, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, I don't know if they necessarily have done a great job of, like, like, I don't know, because we had the buildup of, like, oh, I'm an orphan, and this, like, in the mix-up. So, like, I'm glad that, like, we're dealing with, like, the co- the actual consequences of that. Because that sucked. Like, that's not f- that's not cool. But it's still confusing. Like, it's still, like, wow. Like, <laughs> okay, this is where you're going to take it. Like, you're going to go full-on baddie. So. Yeah, I think, I think we've been shown enough reason to sympathize with Proxima's emotional state in that uh, she's been kind of mistreated by life although not necessarily mistreated by any specific person um, exactly like like yeah. she's like she's it's in a bad situation she had her expectations played with um but we haven't um been presented with anything that would justify her being evil um, yeah exactly not yes. remotely right like we can like we uh, we we sympathize with what she's feeling but um it's no reason to even even like uh, remotely ha- negatively impact someone, much less become the villain of the season. So uh, I, I think I think it is kind of uh, uh, her negative emotions amplified by the mask situation. And uh, it, it's, it's like probably ultimately we should blame the mask and the corruption masks. That's why it's kind of an interesting choice to make her mostly seem like herself, give her the same voice, give her the same, generally the same appearance. Uh, I do think those things were necessary in order to have the arcana emotional arc that we had in this episode with her trying to speak to Proxima. Like, you need Proxima to be accessible, so you need her to 
uh, right. look like herself. Right. If she just looked like Nakrafa, then we're not going to really try to talk to her. It seems kind of obvious that she's gone. Now we kind of, we still, we keep our emotional attachment to Proxima because that's the big difference between Proxima and Nakrafa. Um, it's the same mask, kind of the same evil, uh, force, but, uh, this is a character who we know already and we already sympathize with in Proxima, whereas we don't care about Nakrafa. So that's why also she's, she's competent. Yeah. I mean, I, I think Necrofa was competent, uh, but Proxima- mm, but there wasn't like uh, we don't I need to get just, back into Necrofa issues, but yeah. Well, it, I think it just boils down to the fact that like we know Proxima way more than we knew Necrofa. Like Necrofa, we just knew as like this terrible force, and then that was it. And then she came out of the I don't know the warp circle thing. I don't remember what it was, but uh, it feels like forever the ago. Portal, the portal, yeah. Yeah, the portal. And then she was like there and she was the big bad. And we were like, okay, like that's a thing. So, but like with Proxima, it's like, okay, we, we knew something was going to happen with her. And that's why we, we have this emotional attachment because they built it up for us. So, and, and we're going to be waiting the whole time for like her redemption. Like we're waiting yeah. for her to kind of like snap out of it. Right. So that, and I think, so I, th- I like the choices we've made with her given that, um, the big distinguishing factor of her as a villain is our, is the audience's emotional attachment to her. So we should play into that. We should have her look the same. We should have her sound the same. Um, we should have her behave somewhat sympathetically. I think she was like funny at times in this episode and stuff, more so than Necrafa. So, um, I like all of these choices. I like the emotional arc of Arcana trying to talk to her. Um, the I, end kind of got me a little bit when she was like, we lost her to the darkness. I was like, oh, uh, dang. Yeah. And then, of course, when she was like, I'll always love you. I was like, nice sadness. Yeah, probably my <laughs> my favorite scene of the episode is um, Arcana walking down like the, the stacks of books and her voice echo and uh, Proxima's voice echoing. And uh, she says, I, I love you, Proxima. I always will. And uh, Proxima says, well, you could have fooled me. Um, even though it's like 20 seconds, I think that scene was excellent. And no, uh, it was, it was really good. No, yeah, that was one of my favorite scenes too. <laughs> yeah. And that was preceded by the one we've talked about on the balcony with, um, N- uh, Proxima kind of outlying her motivations. He says, you guys are the chosen ones. I'm the sad little orphan, uh, but not anymore. So that's kind of like an encapsulation of, of her emotional state. Um, it is a little bit frustrating that, uh, we don't really understand why she's acting this way. I think maybe the show should play into the mask, uh, the mask's influence a little more and show us that. Um, because, uh, this is a character we care about and she's kind of acting irrationally and we don't really get why. Um, we really only had one reference to the mask corrupting her. And then I guess at the end we lost her to the darkness. But like, is that she's, she chose to do that, like, on her own, she's just a bad person now, or was it that the mask got to her? I think it's it's all kind of ambiguous, and that's probably intentional, so that we can explore that this season. Um, so I, I guess in that regard, I'm excited to see see how we get into it more. Um, but let, yeah, we, talk, we were talking about uh, Arcana and her trying to talk to Proxima. That's kind of the big character uh, emotional moments in these episodes, um arcana is just the only thing she does this episode is tr- is like trying to get through to proxima uh and i think that this is satisfying given the build-up we got between the two of them we had the whole episode where they were they were together and uh i i, I like this for arcana's character i think arcana's character continuing to jump out uh as the best the best presented among the four I think well Arc- i think at the oh. moment yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we, I we, we've, we've been in this always... holding pattern for a while where I think Arcane has been our main source of uh, uh, of emotional drive within the Mysticons. We've gotten the most from her yeah. character. You know, yeah. I'm really happy with it because it's like we finally gave Arcane something. <laughs> so yeah. it's nice. And it's, always, it's always interesting that Arcana's like character moments come from her trying to connect with another character. They're, like. Yeah. Whereas, like, I, with the other, like, you know, the Mysticons, like Zarya and Piper and M, theirs all came from, like, their own individual kind of stories kind of thing, like, exploring their background. Where, But, like, Arcana's is, like, her, I guess, more so just, like, you know, reaching out to Proxima or reaching out to Zarya or reaching out to whoever. Like, that's how her character grows. And I think I really like that. And it, they, the show does it very well. Yeah, that's a great point. We've gotten a lot of great Arc- Arcana plus someone else moments. Uh, Zarya, Proxima, Dreadbane, uh, Novateron. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. Like these, these, these have all been some of the best scenes of the last 10 or, 10 or 15 episodes. Like uh, that, that they've, they've really shined making Arcana like a source of empathy, I guess. And mm-hmm. I, I think in this episode again, and I'd, 
I guess I'd like to see this continue throughout uh, th- throughout the season. Although with the ends, as reference, we said we lost Rosario, we lost her to the darkness. So like, how much are we giving up on Proxima and trying to right. to talk her down versus taking action against her? That I think that's something that kind of worries me is that if like we're giving up after one episode, that's kind of disappointing. Like. Because I feel like it could be like a continuous thing, like with their interactions. And I think that would bring a lot to their interactions going forward with Proxima is if they're still continuing to sort of like try and draw her out of the darkness versus like, okay, well, she's in the darkness and we've accepted that. Now we just have to take her out kind of thing. Yeah, (laughs) interested to see to see how we present this. I assume this is going to be a main source of struggle throughout the season. Um, We have no problems trying to kill Necrafa, but Proxima, we we kind of have to be careful (laughs) with, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So that uh, although although we're kind of presenting proxies to her at the end of the episode, we'll get into that later. But um, yeah, in the beginning of this episode, I think the first two minutes are just excellent with um, we we had the the Astromancer celebrating and then Proxima comes in and um, she turns all of the uh, astromancers into spectromancers. Novateron sacrificed himself. That was that was a little shocking, for, I thought. Yeah. For yeah. Mal- for Malvron. Like, You're a person? Is what? that's a, that's I know. a it's a great art conclusion. He they always use they're like they're friends now. They're a few episodes ago. He said that <laughs> and then uh yeah. No, I think Novateron's great. One yes. Of the, especially, yeah. especially after like the hug when they like got out of like the layers. So it, this is pretty good. Yeah, and uh, but no more Nova Terran potentially for a large portion of the season. He has turned into a Spectromancer. Um, we had uh, uh, Malvron says she turned everybody in the Faceless Creepers, Gandobi, Quisarla, even Nova Terran. Uh, which I la- <laughs> thank you, Malvron, for listing the, the names of the three Astromancers <laughs> that we know. Um, yes, <laughs> but yeah, what do we what do we think of the Spectromancers here? Uh, pot- potentially them as the new uh, skeletons and uh, scepters and now the the spectromancers. What do you think? Blaine? I like them because like they look cool. Also, like I like this idea of like I I like I don't think we're gonna like just dist- like with <clears throat> Necrofa and the stupid shadows and skeletons. Well, okay, the skeletons were hilarious because like they were ridiculous. <laughs> they had but, wooden sticks. <laughs> yeah, they had sticks and they were like so dumb. <laughs> But it'll be funny to see. Like, I don't know if they can talk, but it'll be interesting. Like, we can't really kill them because they're characters we know. And it'll be interesting to see, like, when we reverse this. Yeah. Because that's something we didn't really have with Necrofa and Dreadbane. And I think they look cool. I'm interested to see, like, what they do. Because right now they're just scribes. So I'm interested, like... Also, they'll be a bit more of a threat. Like, they can do magic as opposed to the skeletons with sticks. So yeah, presumably cool they can to see. Magic, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. The only thing we see them do is write the codex at the end of the episode. Do you like them, April? Uh yeah. I think they're actually like creepy, and I like that. Like, well, and they, I think they call them faceless creepers, and I was like, N- okay, that's appropriate. Like, but uh, I do. If they like, just call I, them the creepers. I'll be okay with that. Yeah, if they, that would be great, actually. Astro creepers. Astro creepers. <laughs> no, I like, I like them. I like that. Um, it's uh. I don't know. It feels like there's a little bit more of stakes this way because like they're actual characters that we kind of know and everything. So like, I I do like the idea of like, okay, well, are we going to try and explore them? Like, are we going to recognize them at some point and be like, Oh my gosh, Nova Terra change back. Or like, are we going to have that? He's taller than everyone. So I feel like, I mean, you, (laughs) how are those eyebrows fit under that helmet? man? (laughs) That's the real question. Where did they get all of those welding masks? I just want to know. (laughs) Yeah, we're gonna try to talk to Nova Terra just like we did Proxima. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think functionally this takes the Astromancers out of play, uh, which is yeah. I, think I like because we, they're so annoying. Yeah, <laughs> like narratively, uh, large portions of the show have been the Astromancers meddling in the Mysticons affairs, and they're not uh, not a factor Meddling's. now. Astromancers. <laughs> yeah, although Nova Terra, I think, is one of our best side characters, so I think that's um, risky. Taking Apocalypse. Yeah, no more of that. Um, I, I will say I, I, I continue to hate the mind control. Um, go back to the uh, episode fourteen podcast, and I, I already said everything I could say here. But um, I don't, I don't like taking away the character's agency, and, and and also I don't like the power level of this because if she can just easily turn the turn all these people into her slaves, then why can't she do this to everyone else? 
Um, right. Kind of the same yeah. thing with Necrafa. Her first move was yeah. to try to turn everyone into to scepters in episode 14, well, and think- she didn't go back to that move again. Well, I think it's interesting because, like, I think Necrofa and Proxima have different end goals. Which, that's the thing right now. We don't really know what Proxima yeah, wants. Don't, like, what does she have to, yeah. like, Necrofa just, like, was evil, ruined the world. But, like, what does Proxima want? Like, she, you know, we already had a, like, she wanted the Starfire Inc. to make her own codex. And now she's made her little, like, minions or whatever. So I, that'll be interesting, I think, moving forward, because it makes a little bit more like she doesn't need everybody like she has her own plan or whatever. Necrofa just like wanted to watch the world burn. So it'll be interesting to see how that progresses. Right. Pro- right. It, it's not really clear what Proxima's trying to do. She takes she gets the ink at the end and then she she kind of just leaves right away. She doesn't really seemingly care about trying to defeat the Mysticons too much. She attacks yeah. them a little bit, but she just she just yeah. gets out of there. Yeah, I um, think she really like has her own like she has her own like plan. Yeah, and her first her first move is to make uh these shadowy figures that we see at the end of the episode. Um and uh that was kinda that's kinda surprising. And she gets the dark codex at the end. Um she's she's re reduced the codex. Um so which by the way puts uh I think puts deboning <laughs> the parents back in play if we can get a hold of that. Yes. But Ooh, uh codex, yeah. codex has juice again and uh she makes these shadowy figures. Delaney, what was your reaction to seeing those at the end of the episode? I was like, ooh, that's cool. It was funny. So I'm watching with my girlfriend and she was like, What are those? I'm like, I don't know. And she was like, Oh, I thought you knew. And I'm like, No, they just I'm watching <laughs> it with you. I was like, I don't, what do you want me to So I'm excited. I think it'll be really cool to have I mean, it's kind of like the typical move to do, but I'm interested to see how Mysticon deals with it. You know, we see that we've seen this in Voltron. Uh, if you've seen Avengers Infinity War, it's, they use it in Infinity War. Like you have your little proxies, and they go out and do stuff. Uh, Proxima's proxies, but uh, I've, I've heard there's a character named Proxima in that. I haven't seen it yet. Oh it's, my god! But it'll be really cool to see, uh, like, what they look like. What are they? Like, are they just shadow creatures? Are they kind of like mythical creatures? Yeah. Um, so there are varying sizes. I'm hoping like, you know, you know, we have like a couple girls, guys, whatever, whatever they are and genderless beings, who knows, <laughs> but I'm, I think it'll be cool. Just, it's just something kind of like spice it up. We've been, you know, we were complaining about, oh, we haven't, we don't have enough places to go, but it'll be, co- I would like to see, you know, new characters because granted, I'm not that I'm. You know, I still want to see Kim Rock because she's ridiculous, but it'll be nice to have like these new people, like, you know, maybe get some new, like, what are they? I mean, I doubt they'll really have backstories unless she summoned them. Like, that's the other thing. Like, did she create them? Are they like, did they already exist? So that'll be cool to see, like, kind of, I don't know, it'll just be nice to have some new villains, maybe something, you know, like, how, like, what are they going to be like? Mm-hmm. So, April, did you also watch the Proxima, pre- like, the banter? That'll be good. <laughs> yeah her talking to them that could be interesting yeah did you watch the preview clip april no for this episode or for, the, ne- for the, next episode no I okay okay, the okay well, it was clip. good well okay then I'll, I'll enlighten you guys at the end but what was your okay. reaction april to seeing the end of the episode i i think it's gonna be interesting because um i guess we kind of need like more like villains or like minions kind of running around where like it was kind of nice whenever we had like the camera episodes even though they were like super goofy and stuff like that sometimes but it was like it's nice so to weird. have it, it but it was nice to have like a villain outside or like an opposing force outside of like the main villain and i think that that was something that like the show did really well at the beginning and then we kind of lost that and so it'll be kind of nice and it kind of made me think of like uh uh what is it? Teen Titans, how there was like the Teen Titans and then there was the whatever the opposite group was. I don't remember, but hive. like, yeah, the hive, that's what it was. Um, and so they kind of had like, they kind of would like come up and like sort of wreck things for everyone. But those episodes were still like really nice and sort of still played into the plot. So I think that if the show does something like that with them, it would be like good as long as they do it successfully um but also, I, like, fighting the main bad every time is kind of like this is getting ridiculous and i think that was like a part of our problem with necrofa was like we would fight her and it just wouldn't go anywhere whereas like this we can like fight them and like ki- like we're fighting them and it's not it's okay that it's not necessarily like moving forward or something like that so i like that i'm excited to see what their character designs look like um 
if it's like all guys, all girls, like okay. well, we, we, we've got nation. that. So we'll, 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 do, we'll do it at the end. <gasps> but um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, the first thing I thought of when uh, what I heard of a potential opposing group was the Rowdy Rough Boys. I feel like that's the Powerpuff yes. Girls. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, anyway, more on that later. Uh, let's talk the library and uh, Snelson, <laughs> uh, the library Snelson. enforcer. Um, so this is the mythical library that we go to, the Library of the Eternal Equinox. Uh, this is a new location we get, even though we rerun a bunch of locations later. Um, we do have this new library. Um, yeah, what do you think uh, generally of a library and Snelson, Delaney? You weren't a fan of Snelson. No, um, I don't think it's as impressive as the library of in Avatar, but, you know, it's okay. Are you saying Snelson no. is no Wan Chi Tong? Is that what you're saying? Obviously, <laughs> obviously, he is no cryptic owl. Why doesn't Snelson have Spirit Fox's assistance? On exactly. Also, yeah. like, I, it was funny that he'd be like, rule number one. It's like, you, you keep Yeah, what do you that. think of the rule number one gag? That was a lot of the episode. No, I did not. I, like... <laughs> It was okay at first, and then I just got really annoyed with it. I was like, could you please, like, there's more than one number. Like, <laughs> there is more than one number. I thought, I, thought, I thought it was very funny. I thought that was a good guess. And I'm like, do people go to this library? Like, yeah, where are the people? Well, it's, it said in the beginning, only the chosen and gods may enter. So, so like, and, no and I guess, and I guess, Ch- Chaco too. <laughs> he gets it. Chaco, because he, he, I love that he got in w- through the like return books drawer yeah yeah okay new segment is uh best choco moment of the episode we're gonna do this every week and this moment's cho- best choco is him going into the return book slot and then opening the door for the miscons right yeah well i really liked when he was like he was just like guys look and no one's paying attention to him yeah. and he was like y'all suck and i feel he bad just he keeps having those moments like is that who talked like is is choco just super smart and everyone yeah, he's just very he's very smart yeah i love choco I yeah, and then he has. No, like, the I cloud did like when he like too. growled at Doug. That was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, there was a f- split second of uh, Clown Foz Chaco, which we hadn't seen him yes. under his underwater form. Yes. Um, yeah, April, what do you think of the library? Um, I thought it looked cool. I liked that it was a four dimensional tesseract. So yeah. that was kind of funny. Piper's like, duh. Yeah, I know, right? P- Piper of all people. And then I thought it was like super cute that M was like extremely excited to be there. But that's very like M. He's such she- a nerd. I love her. I know. And then there was that whole bit about the uh, by the hammer of Harmon. Oh and she's like, no, it's a book written by. And then Piper didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty funny. But yeah, I thought the library was like cool. It looked cool. I would have liked to have explored the library a little bit more. So maybe we can do that later. Just like like, we have to like get something at the library. Yeah, we have to check out a book. (laughs) <laughs> yes, I'd be okay with that. That'd be fine. Yeah. Yeah, I think this was one of the more visually striking things in the show in a while, the library. Um, the t- 10 of two moments that stood out were Arcana walking down the stacks, as I mentioned. And then also at the end, um, I'm going to make this the, the screen cap for the podcast, is when they unleash their special attacks to put out the fires. It like creates this like tornado of color and all yeah. of that within like the, the, the scope of the library in the background. That looks awesome. Yeah. So I think that like the shows that the show is capable of like really great visuals of adventures out a little bit in terms of locations. Uh, once again, like last week we talked about how the shows were using a lot of stuff. We got, uh, this, the segment where Snelson changes their, lo- their, the setting of the story. And then we just go back to three places we already had been. And I think it really stood out there that, uh, we, we just repeat locations a lot. Like, and I think yeah. that's, that segment yeah. r- really highlighted that. Yeah. And we're always in the forest. <laughs> Yeah, the same forest. Um, yeah, and again, it, it's obviously a function of, uh, you know, resource constraints for the show. Um, it's like, I, I'd say it's, it's, it's impressive that, that they're able to do what they do, uh, g- given seemingly the, the constraints that they have, but it did, it did, it did stand out in that segment, unfortunately. Um, you guys mentioned Piper saying, uh, she says, what? It's just a four dimensional tesseract, uh, uh, about the library, uh, yeah. we got we got our uh, interstellar reference uh, with the tesseract, right? I mean, I guess it's also just a thing, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> definitely think of interstellar with that. I think this episode is loaded with references to pop culture slash other things, and uh, just jam packed with them. I have a list here, so we have uh, in the beginning. Tasma says uh, she's going after the dragon disc. Clever girl. So we have our clever girl reference. Um, <laughs> we had fuzzy wuzzy was a Foz. That was one of my favorite lines of the episode was uh, the library voice says, welcome back, Novatar, on your copy of fuzzy wuzzy was a Foz is 400 years overdue. 
Um, we got uh, the four dimensional Tesseract Interstellar. We had Piper found the book Green Dragons and Jam. Um, we hmm. we mentioned hmm. Fellowship of the Dwar- Fellowship of the Dwarves. Um, kind of vague Lord of the Rings reference, I guess. Uh, we has very vague. <laughs> D- D- Doug says, "Don't worry, be happy." At one point, and yeah. then uh, it's hammer time. We get that too. So just uh, also, you shall not pass. Yeah, yes. shall not pass. Said that. Yeah, I'm probably missing a few others, but there's this episode is just uh, jam packed with references. Um, we talked about um, Zar M and geeking out over the book. My biggest complaint with this episode, and I think the state of the show overall right now in general, is uh, that we are not getting in depth into Zar M and Piper. I think, right, yeah. I yes. think Arc- Arcana has had a deep emotional beats to explore as a character. Um, but we've really just been repeating the same stereotype, stereotype like personality traits of Zarya, M, and Piper. Zarya is sarcastic. That's kind of all she does this episode. And nerds out over stuff. That's kind of all she does. Piper is, uh, is, is hype about stuff. That's with the bookworm. That that's all she yes. does here. We haven't really done anything else with these characters in ten, fifteen episodes. Also, when are we going to address the fact that Zari is like a princess and all of yeah. that stuff? Because I feel like that's overdue at this point. Like we need to address it. I think that's been the thing, the part where it stood out most that Zarya hasn't had any in depth characterization because she's had this major thing happen to her and that we haven't really explored it. Well, especially because yeah. like Proxima's literally like fighting them because this happened and Zarya's just like, do, do, do. Yeah. If anyone's going to have like a real issue with like Proxima, it would be Zarya because yeah. Proxima keeps going back to the fact that, oh, she was an orphan. And I sit there and I'm like, so was Zarya. Was Zarya not an orphan? Like, Zarya was literally ripped away from her family. Like, Proxima is just an orphan. Like, like I don't know. It, it bothers me. <laughs> yeah, the, the the most interesting thing we have with Zarya this episode is um, she's kind of, like, insensitive when Proxima is listing out her struggles. Uh, uh, Zarya's like, oh, we, we've uh, we've had bad stuff happen now, so you don't look at us. And then um, Am is like, ugh, uh, you ninny hammer. I think she's referring to Zarya. Uh, and, and Proxima's like, uh, yeah, you guys are, this is what I'm talking about. So... Like, uh, yeah, I, I guess that we didn't really explore it beyond that, but I re- really need Zarya's reaction to her being a princess. Like, this is, uh, the, 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 we, we kind of got Arcana's reaction in episode 26. I feel like we need more of Zarya here. Just, we just need more of these three characters in general to do, uh, different things, I think. Yeah. Yes. Okay. To move forward, because we're very, like, stuck in a row with them. Yeah, I, I think so. And M really stood out so much in the beginning, but I think she has not done anything interesting in a while. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's uh so they're written into the book kind of the main plot of this episode. I think that um er- almost everything else shines except for them being in the book. I don't think it's bad, but it just is uh, kind of neutral. Uh, well, it's like, like a really yeah. cool idea, but they don't really do anything with it. Yeah. I did Ooh. like the bookmark though. That was cool. Yeah, the concept of getting out through the bookmark, I like that. Mm-hmm. Um we're in Snelvania, the happy capital of the realm, very Lego movie with everyone being happy. Yeah, that was yes. pretty funny. Yeah. So I really like the I really like the scene of um Proxima like faking being sad and then being like, Oh, I'm very happy now, we're the same size and I was like, Oh boy. I think that that's my favorite good. Proxima scene of the episode. Was that was her. really good. It was pretty funny. I'm happy. We're the same size. She just sounded so yeah. I I, I like how her character came across in that scene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um but uh, other than that, we do uh matter uh mug matter storm. To get our Doug shoehorned into the episode, which uh, oh yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I could have done oh, without Doug. that. Yeah, last last week Doug was great. He, he I mean, he was fine, but uh, we we threatened him with the the fluffy uh, Zarya. That's how he gets him away. Um, so even seriously, even the stuffies are happy in this place. Um, that was have we have we discussed stuffies by the way? I feel like we've talked about that. Has the show called them that because that was not something that was in so. my lexicon. I don't remember. Calling stu- stuffed animals stuffies. That was not something that I was aware of until No, recently. I was like, okay. Yeah, like, I was I like that's a strange it. term. Yes. <laughs> I think I don't know if that's a Canadian thing or what, but yeah, that is what that means. And uh, <laughs> uh we have uh later we have the giant uh twinkly mare as the beast and it's shooting rainbows. That was really funny. Yeah, that was funny. 
Yeah, and uh, Wormy eats through to get them out. I like a w- worm. I like Wormy. Worm. I like these glasses, but he's a worm. Yeah, his glasses. <laughs> not he's so cute. Not really. <laughs> sure of the logic on that but uh it, it was good and yeah it's it's telegraphed that that's where it's going but i still liked it because it's a good mechanic for piper um the twinkly mares of the beast i don't know i feel like there are more interesting things to do potentially in a book than that but um and i like changing the setting but it was hampered by us only having a few places to go to um so yeah i don't know the the but snelson getting out and then he's like slowly going to the quill I feel like that uh, was worse i think uh, that's where his character shined whether you hate him or, <laughs> or love him that was his i biggest. hate snelson <laughs> Me too. Do you like when he's talking in the beginning? He sounds sinister, but no, the mug is echoey. Yeah, that, that was one was good. funny. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like, oh my god, it's a snail. I like rule number one. I like, I, I like that guy. Oh, the, okay, the three meta moments of the episode. So let's take our. That's another. This is another great thing about this episode. Playing with the, our typical terminology three three times. Let's let's pick what our best one is. So first we have our Arcana trying to uh, transform. When she's uh, her, oh, we've talked about them in drawer form, but she's trying to transform and uh, she cannot because they don't have uh, magic. And it's like the music like goes. Like, yeah, that was, that was pretty good. good. Yeah, I liked um, it. Next, awesome. we have uh, Let's Go Girls. It's magic hour without magic. Yeah. I cool. like that, too. I mean, that's our favorite thing is playing with magic hour, right? Mm-hmm. So Yes. But uh, putting it into the episode. <laughs> yeah, last we have at the end, they're gonna draw out the fire with their special attacks, and then they do with them. They do all four, and then Snelson's uh, shushes them. Yes, <laughs> she's f- sorry, force of habit. I love during the climax of the episode, they do their stupid special attacks. They shout it out, and they get shushed. That's that's that was my favorite one. I thought that was so funny. It so, was pretty yeah, good. Yeah, those those were the. I, I appreciate we're playing with the parroting the format more as as we're continuing here i think magic hour is the best one that's i mean that's always our i favorite. agree nothing will ever be better than proxima saying it's magic hour no that's true <laughs> you're, you're right, right. <laughs> Guys, that, that's my line yeah <laughs> that's that's the we'll love our uh magic hour parody power rankings there's probably one or two other ones um but yeah we had oh that so them as dwarves um uh, the, the, Sam is going to be very happy with this. Our, our fellow co Sam, she was upset that, uh, the female dwarves in the show did not have beards, but, uh, they are, everyone except for M is put in dwarf form and they like it's do so have beards good. and stuff. Yeah. They're, yes. they're, they kind of just come across as male dwarves. Um, that's what I kind of took that as. Yeah. Which, which also, I guess, didn't really make sense. I, I don't know. Mm. Yeah. I felt like I they know. were kind of like, I, I was going to say, I felt like they were like reusing character design and they were like, we have all of these male dwarf character designs. So let's just add them in there and change the color of their beards. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I liked it because seeing them them as dwarves. Uh, Piper likes the beard. It's the, the beards, are, they're so fluffery, she says. That's why I was like, that's why I was like, this made it all worth it because Piper got to have a beard and that line was great. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, do we had dwarf Chaco as well. That was good. Too. That was also the best. Yeah. Um, yes. so yeah, so the, uh, that, that was the best part of the, uh, the, the like book and the settings and the, Chaco's could, like the tiniest dwarf. It was so funny. Yeah. The t- <laughs> even, even tinier. Um, yeah. So, uh, let, let's go through any other random lines you haven't hit on before we speculate about those people. We had DJ Gandobi is in the chamber. Do the levitation in the beginning. Lord. I like the uh, the storyboarding on them dancing. I thought that was really well done with the dragon disc, and he's like, uh, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> that that stood out to me. Um, we uh, P- Piper eating the the cloud <laughs> cumulonimbus, <laughs> the most delicious of the clouds. I don't know. Oh, we had uh, Snelson. Another great line. He says, "Children are always sticky." That was oh. good. That was, I think, the best Nelson moment was children are always sticky. That was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that is true. Children are, in fact, always <laughs> sticky. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. And uh, we got uh, shoot first, ask questions later from Zarya. Like, okay, encapsulating Zarya's character in, in that one line. Yeah. And I think that might be that might be it. Oh, one thing I wanted to say. I think the episode went too quickly at the end from trying to stop Proxima from getting the starfire ink to trying to put out the flames in the library. Like we very quickly pivoted. We we like gave up and very quickly pivoted to that. And it happened within the span of 30 seconds, I think. Yes. I think our priorities are in the wrong place in that moment. (laughs) Well, for me, it was like, I don't really care about the library. Like 
in yeah. Avatar, like it was very different. Like it was like you like what? Granted, we spent a lot more time in the library in Avatar than here, but like, well, well, the thing was like in Avatar, it was very much like this is a place of sacred knowledge. Like there is really important knowledge in this library, and here I was like, it's just a library, like. Because that was the thing that I was kind of like, okay, because they're like, oh, I hope there's like horror stories. And they were like, look at this book and this book. And I was like, ah, interesting. Because yeah. like, it wasn't really like, it's not like it had it really, the only important thing it seemed to have was Starfire Inc. And everything else was like, it's just a library. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 we didn't have enough emotional attachment to, to care about saving it at the end. I love, love what we're doing with the special attacks and a great visual, but, uh, it, it was like, what, why are we doing this? Stop her from getting the ink. Like, uh, and I, I, I kind of appreciate that the Miscons are willing to, like, cut their losses and, like, uh, logically reevaluate, but it, the, we didn't see them do that. You know, it just, it just kind of changed on, on, on a whim to, to what we're doing. So. Um, it maybe could have given more time to that. Also, as you mentioned, the scary story thing in the beginning, I love Piper reading them. That was the, good. The story. scary story. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Tasma is there listening. She was, uh, not impressed with the story. Although. She got I the love snowman Tasma. back. Yeah. She's the snowman yes, back. She does. Is that also I Jeff or is it a new one? Oh, I, I hope she built it herself. <laughs> like, I just want, I want that to be like a running gag is that, the snowman gets destroyed and then at some point we see her building a new one that would yeah. be great <laughs> kind of shocked tasma is still in the snow globe <laughs> the, this the two episodes later we don't know what else to do with her so. i think it's so funny that she's in the snow globe and again best gag was waiting for it was zarya shaking the snow globe it's so good yeah yeah her <laughs> hurricane zarya she says um so there okay i think i think uh hit on everything let let me give you a picture of what uh the vexicons is what they're called oh look, god look like uh and, well okay i'm gonna say presumably uh they're called the vexicons that's what the, the next episode description uh references them uh the law the lost scepter is episode uh 30 the mysticons race against the vexicons to retrieve a powerful scepter oh these and, people look cool. And here is, Mine's not loading. Oh my god, load. Click, click on it. So we have... Uh, I did click on it! <laughs> we have... Uh, seemingly, they are... Uh, they correlate to members of the Mysticons, like each one. Um, yeah. Oh my god, they're, they're so cool. They're weird versions. So we have... This is in the preview clip for episode 30. If you want to go to the Mysticons YouTube channel. Um, we have uh, Ice slash Crystal Arcana. Oh, I uh, wonder which one she is. She's blue. <laughs> Uh, we have Fox Zarya. Yeah, uh, that's cute. yeah. Uh, we have Giant Boulder M, and yep. then we have uh, Emo Pixie Piper. <laughs> Emo Pixie Piper. Emo Pixie. <laughs> this is oh, this I'm is excited. not what I was really expecting. Uh, for these, this these... is ridiculous, and I love it. <laughs> these these characters look so cool. I'm just gonna say, like, can we switch out the Mysticons for these people? Because I want to wow, stare rude. at them all the time. <laughs> Jeez. No, this is exactly this is what everyone was talking about. This is literally like the hive. Yeah, that pixie looks like Jinx. <gasps> she does. Yeah, I guess they're supposed to just be dark mysticons. Um, are they like paper? Um, uh, Proxima calls them her children at the end. I don't. I don't know what they're like. Is this just from a spell? Are these like? Uh, are, are these actually supposed to be analogs to them? Are they like pure a pure evil anti mysticon group? I think Do I'm they- going to be really frustrated if they're like. She well, purposely created like- them to be like the mysticons, except evil because. And then she's doing it like out of a motivation because the Mysticons never accepted her or whatever. Like, I think I'll be super frustrated. <laughs> well, I hope yeah. if they're like her children, like she just kind of made them like they'll have like their own personalities and like maybe they'll like do their own stuff. I'll like that. That'll be fun. Yeah, when I heard, when we saw the name Vexicons first in the episode description, and my first thought was that this would be a group that Proxima would make, in a, in exactly what April was saying, to try to like uh, make her own Mysticons. The OG Mysticons didn't accept me. I'll make my own with me as the leader. But this isn't uh, her. This this is four w- that doesn't include her. So yeah. I'm, I'm not sure what her motivations are in making these people. Um, I well, also it's probably just to like, keep them busy while she goes and does whatever she needs to do. Yeah, I guess so. I guess that that's all. That's what they're gonna do. Um, to me, the most ridiculous one is uh, Furry Zarya. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> and she's got the hoodie. <laughs> Why it's why so do we good. why do we need Zarya's fursona in in this show? Like what? <laughs> this I is love ridiculous. it. It's so they good. They even my like I'm like zooming in, and they even have like uh like bu- they all have like matching belt buckles that look yeah. like so good. It looks the, like a day, yeah, like a but, inverse of the Mysticon one. Like I'm I'm in love with this. <laughs> yeah, they have their belt buckle. Yeah, Giant M is good. She's the biggest, and then um, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a, a pixie piper. That's that's a good one. And interested w- to see what uh, Arcana stick is. Um, this, yes. this this ice. Like what what's what's she doing? So, um, do, does her hair kind of look like Proxima's now, standing up like that? Yeah, I think that's yeah, what Proxima's kind of. hair looks like. Because they're yeah. supposed to be sisters. Ah, yeah. So maybe this is like this is my real sister now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because my other one rejected me. Oh my god. Oh, I'm already frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's what we'll get into next week with the Lost Scepter. Uh, very excited for the Vexicons. A lot of hype. Yeah, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what's happening with them. Make sure you check out that preview clip. Um, Delaney, what are your final thoughts on uh, this episode, Happily Never After? Um, I liked it. I don't necessarily think it was like the best, but there were really good character moments. I do think like I'm ready for more character moments with the rest of the Mysticons, and I am excited about these, even though it's stupid that they're called the Vexicons. I'm excited to see what happens. I'm excited for the banter and like the ridiculousness of it all. Yeah, when I had the prospect, I heard the prospect of um, we're speculating. It's like evil clone versions of the Mysticons before we had these designs. The thing I was most excited for was like if uh, evil Zarya would like flirt with Kitty, and like that would <gasps> oh that would ins- that would like instigate yes. Moon Boon. I don't, now I don't know if we're gonna have uh, Fox Zarya do that, but I st- that that was that was an interesting prospect. Um, April, final thoughts on Happily Ever After. Um, it was a good episode and I'm excited for the Vexicons and to see like what we're going to do exactly with Proxima or what Proxima is going to do. So I thought it was like a really good introduction into like evil Proxima. So I liked it. Yeah. Enjoyed. Yeah. Good, 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 good uh, Proxima intro. I, I really like this episode. Very excited to see. It's coming next. I like shaking it up, introducing the Vexcon, so we'll see what we're doing with that next week. Um, subscribe to not miss our Lost Scepter discussion next week. Shout out to everyone listening on YouTube. Uh, leave us comments. Uh, last last week, someone answered. I posed five random questions, and someone answered them exactly. So I want everyone to <laughs> uh, list your answers to the following questions. Uh, what did you think of Happily Never After? Um, uh, do you enjoy Evil Proxima so far? Um, what else can we ask? Uh, would you want to live in uh, Snellvania? Who's your favorite uh, Vexicon? No, yeah. yeah. What do you, who, 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 which which Vexicon uh, do you think you're gonna like the most? And uh, what are your what are your theories for the Lost Scepter? What did, what's this powerful scepter gonna do? So let us know your answers to those five questions in the comments. Um, yes, uh, subscribe. Talk with us on Discord, overlyanimated.com slash Discord. That's the place to be for Mysticon's discussion. Uh, support us via Patreon, patreon.com slash overlyanimated. Uh, thank you very much to all of our current patrons, especially our patron of the podcast, Alec, AK Frozone. And thanks as well as to our patron executive producers, John Ryan, Steve Axe, Andy, and Q. Uh, check out other podcasts at overlyanimated.com. Final Space uh, season finale is tomorrow. It's very good. And uh, we have, we're going to have our podcast up right away. We're going to have Craig of the Creek discussion and some other stuff potentially as well. Find all that out at overlyanimated.com. Thanks very much, guys, for listening. We will see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.